Hello and welcome back. My name's Jeff and today we are playing RL Craft. Um, originally I was going for a true hardcore run, but after attempting it 43 times and dying <laughs> after getting as far as day 47, I decided to make this a uh, bronze man semi hardcore challenge in which every 20 days I get a checkpoint and I can save scum from that checkpoint. Um, I won't abuse that, so I won't start doing sketcher things on like day 21, day 22, because I know I won't lose as much. Another rule to sort of uh, balance out the fact that I uh, have those checkpoints, no summoning rods. The summoning rod is extremely powerful, but it essentially makes every fight the same. Your strategy is to sit back and spam Aegis's at the thing until it dies. And I feel like between being Bronze Man and uh, not having the, the summoning rod, it makes fights a lot more interesting, a lot more tactical, a lot more strategic. And um, since I'm only losing like three hours of progress versus like 40 to 60, I have a little more room to do those sketchier things I couldn't do if it were a true hardcore run. Rule number three, no exploits, uh, no duplications, no, um, no duplications, no infinite, uh, no infinite emeralds, no infinite experience, and no mob grinders. There's a lot of uh, ex uh, spawners in RL Craft, and it's really easy to make a mob grinder out of one of those spawners and use that to get infinite experience so you can get straight to the max level really, really quickly. Yeah, so I just decided uh, I'm not allowed to abuse any of those functions. I'm not allowed to create farms like that. So hopefully that makes it a little more challenging and makes it a little more interesting for y'all to watch. So yeah, please enjoy as I enter day one of this semi-hardcore RL Craft challenge. And here we see one of the most important moments of the series, I find the village. I end up spending uh, most of my series uh, surviving in this village, building it up, defending it, flattening it out. And one of my biggest regrets, right here, this sheep and the other sheep around here. I did not take any of these sheep alive and I will come to regret it because they would have been a very valuable resource and I did not realize it at the time. So there I am, dawdling along, being stupid, and I have no idea. So it's still day one, uh, less than three minutes in, but I felt the need to explain why this village is so important. And it's right here, this little teleport shrine, this waystone as it were. I believe that's the Myers waystone. And then the Tundra Brandenburg waystone, right over here. That's right, there are two waystones. All these trees are gone uh, at the moment, but... Yes, this waystone right here. I have two waystones right beside each other. So whenever danger came rearing its little head, I could just hit either one of those waystones and be teleported next to a cobblestone reinforced building on either side of the town. That was super essential to me surviving as long as I have. But yeah, I will continue forward. I forgot how busy the first day was. So here I am running around looting town um, as one does when they find a town in Minecraft. And I found this neat little place and these neat little red blocks behind this neat little place that I did not notice when I was in here. It is totally dumb luck that I survived day one even. I didn't even know they planted booby traps. I didn't know that TNT was there even after I had set it off. I did not realize that was a thing until it blew up. So it is entirely dumb luck I just survived that. And you can see I'm like so confused about what just happened. I'm wandering around, looking around like what in the world? Anyways, moving forward. It is still day one. Um, I told you a lot happened on day one and you can tell I'm taking damage and all these little swirls are coming off of me. I'm freezing to death. I don't have any armor, I don't have anything and I'm in a cold biome. So I lit a furnace and I started cooking some of the logs and some of the food I found in order to stay warm because I had no idea how I was going to um, managed to survive the freezing cold. Uh, eventually I found out that wool armor helps a lot with that, but that's not till much later. And I think I'm about to sleep and thus concludes my first day. And the first day is finished. Please don't ask why his arm does that when he sleeps. I don't know. I really don't. And I'm still struggling with how not to die from frost. Day two is looking bright. Day two, I found a chest and it was filled with leather armor and a bow and a whole bunch of arrows, like 200 arrows. And it's in the archer tower, which should be unsurprising to anyone. I'm climbing down through the archer tower, but these slits right here are actually extremely useful for taking care of monsters. 
and I do make good use of that from time to time. I'm continuing to loot the village and I have actually just decided uh, to set up not in that house. Actually, yeah, kind of in that house, but in this double house right here. I have my storage chest right there and my little bedroom right here, which is actually super inconvenient because it's far away from all the villagers. And I've also started mining operations, which are on the far side of the lake over here. If you go into here, there's a little bitty mine right there. And yeah, I just do a little bit of deforesting uh, to reduce the chance that mobs stay around during the day and spawn from the darkness. The rest of day two was spent running around placing beds in random houses, and I have successfully survived two days in RL Craft Hardcore. Day three, I spent a good chunk of time helping uh, struggling villagers and revamping some of the infrastructure. I also spent a lot of time being lost. Um, and just kind of wandering around the village and unfortunately slaughtering sheep. After improving the infrastructure of the village, on day three I went mining and I found my first safe source of, uh, of experience. Safe being an asterisk because uh, there are some nasty events for mining in this game, but I don't run into uh, any of them just now. The night of day three, um, I w continued mining and I found a whole bunch of iron, but I found a scary noise over here. I don't know what it is, but I did gain knowledge uh, in my beastery for a Gru. I don't know what that is, and I do not want to know. Um, all I know is it makes scary noises, so I stayed away from that area. The morning of the fourth day, I saw something clipping through the rock. I don't know what it is, but it is quite terrifying, and I hope I never have to see it again. At that point, I picked up, and I used my lights to sort of relay myself out of the mines without having to expose myself to pitch blackness. Coming out of the mines, I ran into this thing. A Maui or a Maru or something, and I promptly ran away from it, as all good heroes do. Look at me go. Although, I did bravely, bravely face it once I had the ability to safe spot it and it could not effectively fight back. Oh, and at this point I had made myself a wool shirt, so I stopped, oof, freezing to death. He got in one good hit, maybe two, but I, uh, yeah, he's pretty well stuck in that bridge there, so I just murdered him for the free stuff. Yay, experience. Remember how I said mining wasn't exactly safe? I ran into a Geo Notch, but I also found a battle tower, and I ran for my life. Although apparently he was stuck on this tree, so I really didn't have to run, and I probably could have safe spotted him, but I didn't know that. I was busy running for my life. The evening of the fourth day, it's back in the mines to collect that sweet, sweet iron I couldn't collect before. And there's quite a bit of it. I ended up getting uh, about 23 iron ores. Day 5, I spotted a friendly neighborhood pixin, and I decided to murder him for his glowstone. Immediately after deciding to murder him for his glowstone, I realized I hadn't made a shield yet, and it did not go great for me. Look at me go, running away, as heroes do, and I hide in my house. <laughs> Later in day 5, I found some nice yetis and I decided to murder them for del their delicious yeti meat. Cooked yeti uh, gives you a resistance bonus for like 20 seconds, so it's super valuable. Later in day 5, I found this big scary temple and I immediately ran away. Honestly, I shouldn't have been there in the first place, but since it was still early on in the series, I decided to give it a risk. That is not something I would do nowadays. And I got a friendly nymph to heal me up. I also started looting this temple, and I gave it a fair amount of uh, skepticism, backing away from each chest as I open it. And um, luckily there appeared to be no threats here, and I got some fancy new iron armor that I couldn't wear yet. So I grabbed it for later. The evening of the fifth night, I realized I had stayed out too late, and I was avoiding that giant monster over there. Um, for good reason, because he looks terrifying. And uh, I had to fight my way back, which is something you never want to do in RL craft. Luckily, it turned out... Oh, wow. I did not notice that creeper when I was um, running through. I just happened to outpace him. That is very fortunate. Um, yeah, no, I had no idea that creeper was there. I was just lucky. But uh, I do eventually make it back to base. Or my little house, as it were. Don't ask why the skeleton has a trumpet. There is a very good reason for that, and I can't remember what it is. I think it's a mod, or a resource pack, or something like that. And I am home free. I also uh, kill a couple of the zombies that are trying to murder my villagers to keep the place safe, but they weren't too much trouble. On the sixth day, I looked for sheep, I gathered wood, and I made planks. Um, I also revamped the farms a little bit. That was my entire day. I did not find any sheep. I'm convinced they're extinct. On day 7, I continued expanding my farms, and apparently a manta ray and a slug thing had an epic battle to the death. That has nothing to do with me expanding my farms, but it's a lot more interesting to look at. 
And unfortunately, the slug has perished. While I was working on my farms, I was attacked by my very first water Jengu, but definitely not my last. And apparently he got stuck in this tree. I was wondering why he didn't follow me. Water Jingo are pretty easy to deal with, but I did not know that at the time, so I dealt with them like I deal with all new threats, and I ran away as quickly as I could. The morning of the eighth day, I realized the Jingo was still there, and I abused this bridge over my two houses so I could safe spot him. I just back up, and the Jingo gets an angle, and then I smack him with my sword. And look at that, some free water charges, or whatever those things are called. I spent the rest of day eight improving the farms, covering the water so it would stop freezing over into ice, and feeding the villagers so I could end up uh, getting a more sustainable population. On the ninth day, I started flattening out this hill in order to get enough dirt so that I could start filling in all the ocean surrounding my village, because the ocean in RL craft is not your friend. The morning of the tenth day, I decided to pick a fight with the Wisp, as revenge for killing me in an earlier failed attempt. The Wisp ended up being a little more trouble than I remembered, so I think I ended up hiding from them and uh, deciding to not actually fight them to the death. Because um, they don't do that much damage, but they do tend to stay very high in the air. And I don't actually have enough agility to use that bow I picked up earlier. Oh no, maybe I had picked up agility by this point. I'm not sure. But I stopped worrying about it and went about my chores. And while going about my chores, a Spriggan decided to attack me as well. It was just not my day for spirits. And there I am, bravely running away once again. Spriggans are not super dangerous the biggest problem is they poison you and that can do a lot of damage for just one hit which i guess does make them kind of dangerous so i guess i'm a liar thankfully after attacking me the spriggan attacked some villagers and then the aegis decided to deal with it um the loot fell on top of a building so i never did see or grab it but i was free to continue with my landfill project which was coming along nicely and I was hoping eventually the grass would spread and uh, it would be a spawning point for sheep. And that way I could have more farms to harvest so more Spriggans could spawn and try and kill me. During the landfill project, I was starting to terraform some of the area around the village. And then the villagers were attacked by the first Banshee I ran into on this playthrough. Banshees are no joke because they do not care about walls at all. I didn't even notice this one was there for quite some time, but thankfully the Aegises were there to take care of it. I'm pretty confident I could have outran it because my waystone was right over there. But, you know, it's better to not have to find out these types of things. Plus, I got some free Ender Pearls. So, yay Banshees. Later on day 10, I decided to pick a fight with some fish. It did not go my way, so I ran away and I hid. Look at me go. So while I was running away from the fish, apparently this was following me. Remember how I said the ocean is not your friend? The ocean is not your friend in RL craft. I did not notice this while I was playing. Day 11, I continue to flatten the land as another water Jingu attacks me. It uh, doesn't put up much of a fight and turns into a nymph and flies away. And I do the same as I head to the mainland. And of course by fly away, I mean return immediately to nice safe dry land, cause the ocean is not your friend. I spent the rest of day 11 causing climate change and deforesting all the trees inside my little village area just to give a few less areas for mobs to spawn and hopefully survive during the day. On day 12, I started turning the logs I gathered from deforesting the area into planks and then I started getting back to flattening this hill right here so we had enough uh, dirt to cover all these little water spots in town. This is going to go on for quite some time. Doesn't the area just look so much nicer with some nice flat terrain? On day 12, I also started my unhealthy habit of harvesting every wheat crop as soon as it's grown. For some reason, I can't just walk past a fully grown wheat crop. Instead of harvesting it all at once, I spend a lot of time getting it one by one. That eats up a lot of my time. The rest of my day was spent expanding my farms and fighting water Jingu. I ended up fighting about three of these guys throughout the day, um, and they all ended up sort of like this fight, where I started fighting them, and then they just polymerized into this uh, nymph right here. I don't mind it because the nymphs give me uh, monster regen. I kind of wish all the monsters could just do that monster mash thing and stop being my problem, but you know, can't win them all. We spent the entire morning of day 13 trying to get a piece of flint so we could make a flint and steel. We had very bad RNG on this. Yeah. It was only after going through that ordeal with the flint and steel that I decided to look up how to make torches. And it turns out these torches are only temporary. In order to make the permanent torches, you need the glowstone dust uh, that um, pixins and uh, 
those little water eels or rabbi or something drop and you need to use that in order to make permanent torches i mean it's a good thing that a lot of stuff drops them we found another helpful pixin friend deciding to uh, give us some buffs so we killed him and out pops a reaper <laughs> these guys aren't too tough to fight but they do appear when you least expect it they can show up whenever you kill like anything i think and they can also oh there he is um, and they can also appear when you go to bed. Your shield blocks their attacks. Another reason shields are a godsend. The only thing that can be annoying is sometimes they like to fly really high out of reach. And I still hadn't invested in um, agility. They also like to float through walls. Um, yeah, that's a thing. But uh, eventually I take care of him. Eventually. Or I just hide from him. Yeah, I'm in no mood to fight this guy right now. Oh, no, I do not fight this one. I bravely, bravely run away. On day 14, this happened. Day 15 looks uh, pretty much the same with a lot of terraforming. Eventually, I realized that having this giant crater, this giant ravine in, uh, you know, right by where I live is not the greatest idea in the world. So I do cover that up. I decide to do another search for sheep. I don't find any, but I do find this ooze here and I take some of it home with me. I take the ooze home and decide to dump it in this pool of water, not knowing what else to do with it. It freezes the area around it, which is strange and terrifying, and I really should have been more afraid of strange things at this point, but I was young and reckless. Day 16, I spent the entire day doing inventory management and terraforming. I'm uh, trying to flatten out this entire area and, you know, make the entire area just a flat plane so I can see everything easily and move around easily. Day 17 is more terraforming. But isn't it starting to look nice? Oh, and also some cracks are looking very, very hungry. I also decide that I need some animals and using a boat is not going to cut it. So I create a land bridge from my island to the green foresty island over there. I also get my first cow. And so it begins. Day 18, I move two more cows to my pen. And that way I can jumpstart my breeding program. We spend most of the rest of day 19 farming. And if any of these days seem kind of short to you, odds are I spent it collecting wheat. I told you I spent a lot of time going out of my way to pick up crops when the entire field isn't fully grown. Yeah, I, I do spend a lot of time picking wheat and I figured I wouldn't waste y'all's time reporting it every time I did. I decided to go back for the other cow and bring him across the land bridge. A little turtle came to visit me and so did someone else. Luckily, he was pretty stupid. He just kind of went around the hill. They can run on land. This one was just too stupid too. Which is sort of the theme of this entire um, adventure is Jeff obliviously avoids danger. Day 19, I do some chores and I immediately get attacked by a Jingu afterwards. And just after that, another Jingu attacks. You know, one on one, they're not too scary, but um, two at a time plus a Karak attacking me. You know, not the best thing in the world. I use the door to block out the Jingu, and then I use it to safe spot both one of the Jingu and a crack. Uh, I'll take out the other one in good time. The rest of day 19 I spent running around not totally sure what to do. I harvested, harvested some crops, I fed some animals, I planted some sugar cane. Yeah, I just kind of wandered around being confused. On day 20, I spent almost the entire day doing chores. I went out and I found a whole bunch of sugar cane to expand my sugar cane farm. And I did not see that sheep over there, unfortunately. I'm just gonna cry in my corner for a little while about that. Live on, little sheepy. The last in existence. On day 21, we're back to the landfill project. But now you have a very clear view of the waystone, which is gonna be important for any quick escapes we need to make. And look at that nice flat area. While filling in the central lake, I got ambushed by a couple of Jingu. I'm pretty used to handling them at this point, but I still decided to play it safe and use a safe spotting method. This takes a little while. By the end of the day, the central lake is mostly covered, and that's a lot less area for Jingu to come up and ambush me. They're still going to, though. Day 22, we're right back to filling in the ocean and removing all those pesky spawning points when a stray Karak decides to pick a fight with us. We safe spot him using the door, so he's not much trouble. I also mastered the art of killing our friendly neighborhood Pixins on this day. It's real easy, because they have a pattern of shooting three times, letting you hit them, and then shooting three times. 
And also, if you use an axe, even a stone axe, it does a lot more damage to them. So you can uh, kill these guys for their glowstone when all they're trying to do is help you all day long. My herd of cows is also really moving along. Day 23 was entirely chores, so I decided to show you what it looks like whenever I load this up in replay mod. It doesn't register all the blocks I've broken, so they're all just floating in midair until I press play. Isn't that neat? I also expanded the sugarcane farms over here, and I expanded my herd of cows, which it also doesn't process that their hearts have gone through either. Isn't that neat? I also did a lot more farming, which you can see, yeah, the same holds true. It's really a fascinating process. Um, the central lake is also completely filled in. Day 24 and the landfill project isn't going anywhere. I do end up fighting the Lacedon, and they're about as scary as the Cracks, which is to say not very. I also have an Aegis to help me out. Shortly afterwards, I'm attacked by another Jingu. The fight is nothing special, I'm a little sloppier than usual, but when I finally do kill the Jingu, it drops a Heart Crystal Shard, which eventually I'll be able to use to increase my maximum health, and that will be just dandy. Isn't it pretty? On day 25, I remembered I am terrible at organizing, and past Jeff loves screwing over future Jeff. So this was my day. All day. On day 26, we decided to feed the cows from inside the pen for some unknowable reason, and we have a minor escape. A minor, mini escape. Look at them. Aren't they cute? They're utterly adorable. We end up solving it by just making a bigger pen. Milking experience from our cows has given us enough levels in defense and attack that we can finally wear iron armor and use an iron sword, so now surviving will be much easier. By the way, in our craft, farms and breeding animals are really the cream of the crop as far as safe experience. On day 27, I created a little area for fishing by filling in this section next to the greenhouse. I also fed all my cows to create even more moomers, and I fished for most of the day. Day 28, I'm ambushed by two Jingu as I'm doing chores. I run to my safe spot, and I'm really not in the mood for any of their nonsense today. Once I'm safe, I waste no time in gunning them down. I have stuff to do today, like breeding cows and harvesting crops, so I just shoot them, and I get on with my life. Teach him to get in the way of my chores. Once the Jingu are safely dealt with, I start massively expanding my farms. Those two little plots of wheat were not nearly enough. I need way more cows and way more wheat to feed those cows. On day 29, I run into my first Herma. They're not very fast and they don't hit very hard, but they do take a lot to kill. I found out later that it's much more efficient to just kill them with an axe. I spent the rest of day 29 doing chores, and occasionally summoning Cthulhu, but on the bright side, my sugarcane farm is looking amazing. So while I'm fishing, Cthulhu decides to pay me another visit. It's here that I make one of the dumbest decisions I've made throughout my uh, 29 days of surviving. I decide to see how tough he is. At first it's going well enough, but then I'm realizing the arrows are not doing enough damage, so I decide to try and kill him with my axe. And he pulls me under, strangling and choking me. At this point, I was pretty well convinced I was dead. But no, I managed to come out just before I started drowning. That was the closest I had come to dying in quite some time. On day 30, I caught crabs, and then uh, I spent the rest of the day fishing and dealing with various Jingu that came along, but overall, nothing too crazy happened. Spent the entire day fishing. On day 31, I have so many cows, is actually starting to lag my single player server. I am thoroughly abusing husbandry in order to get as much experience as possible, and that's how I'm wearing iron right now, actually, is through abusing husbandry. Day 32 starts with murdering pixins and managing my inventory. Um, I spend a good chunk of the day managing inventory. I spent most of the day experimenting with the equipment forge, only to realize I don't actually have anything needed to make the advanced weapons in our craft. I spent the rest of the day collecting sugarcane and expanding the sugarcane farm to encompass both sides of the land bridge. Day 33 starts with expanding my sugarcane farm, as it's still really my primary source of income as far as the villagers are concerned. Have you ever wondered what a thousand cows sitting in a 6x6 pen sounds like? Now you know. On day 34, I finally realized that having this very slow walking in water path to my mines was way too dangerous, so I built a footpath. A few moments later, I get incredibly lucky. As I head into the mine, I should have realized that ooze is weird and terrifying, and it spawns this monstrosity. Luckily, I'm already inside the cave where it can't reach me, and I just safely shoot it to death with my bow. That would have been terrifying to fight fairly. 
but I also got a Wendigo antler from it, so that's good. Also, as a precaution against other Wendigo spawning and uh, destroying me, I uh, blocked up that ooze. Hopefully, they can't spawn anywhere else. On day 35, utter catastrophe strikes. I become one with the Moo Pit, and the Moo Pocalypse begins. I found myself trapped inside the Moo Pocalypse, and I had forgotten that I had a gate over here, which I could have used to escape. Left with no other option which my tiny brain could remember, I resorted to my only solution calling the herd. and the herd took its vengeance in the form of a reaper. My arrows and the reaper's shots were both blocked by the dozens of hundreds of cows spread everywhere, so we were sort of trapped in a stalemate, and the Moopocalypse continued ever forward. I finally slayed the reaper, but it was becoming nighttime, and I was still trapped amongst hundreds and hundreds of cows with no way to find the way out. And another reaper was released. The cows would claim me as one of their own. Cthulhu also joined the party in the background. Finally, realizing that slaughtering more cows was not the answer, I broke through the gate just in time to get picked up by a rock. And at this point, I thought I was screwed, but I slew the rock and he dropped me into the water, even though all of my health bars were red, and I ran desperately for shelter. The Moopocalypse... Actually, no, I didn't run for shelter. I got hung up at the gate trying to stop the Moopocalypse from spreading, but um... Then I finally wisened up and went to bed. <laughs> On day 36, I pretty immediately set about cleaning up after the Moopocalypse. Um, although I was sort of laughing and joking about it just now, uh, it was literally the closest I had come to death up to this point. And I was actually very paranoid when I first started killing these cows because um, I, I had got it in my head that reapers were dangerous, but it was really just because I was trapped getting bumped by 100 cows that I couldn't fight back that well. Uh, but yeah, the cleanup goes pretty um, uneventfully. On day 37, I finally looked up how uh, breeding works in 1.12. It doesn't depend on beds the way it does in the modern versions of Minecraft. It depends on the number of doors you have that lead to the outside. So apparently, each one of those doors counts as a house for a villager. Doesn't make sense, but I'll abuse it. Um, I also finally replaced my armor with some proper iron armor, so no more wool clothing until I start freezing to death, of course. On day 38, I started on the second floor of the luxury apartments. I was determined to get this town as filled with villagers and more importantly, Aegises as I possibly could. Building it was a bit more tricky than I thought it would be just because I was making it as minimalist as possible and uh, placing the doors was a pain in the butt. But other than that, it went pretty smoothly. The second door took the entire day. I didn't even manage to get my normal chores of planting the garden and uh, breeding the cows done. This was my entire day. On day 39, I was ready for a nice relaxing day of chores. Just nothing but pretending I was playing Animal Crossing for the day. Unfortunately, the game had other plans in mind. Just like that, my entire map is surrounded by horrible fire-breathing lizards. I did the brave thing and hid inside this house with zero intention of coming out. Because while any of those dragons could easily destroy my little house, none of them noticed it. And unfortunately, the cockatrices did um, slowly devour all of my cattle. There was nothing I could do about that. Uh, for reference, I have played RL Craft enough to know that basically any one of these creatures out here could kill me in one hit, even in my full iron getup. I did toy with the idea of tunneling out to a different building. That didn't really go anywhere, and I mostly just waited down here for the rest of the night. As these tyrants just uh, 
sort of did whatever they wanted. Oh, also, regarding my villagers, yeah, most of them were slaughtered too, so it's very fortunate that I kept two locked up inside this house, otherwise I would have no villagers left. So I'm not totally sure why this happened, it seemed like the dragon was just doing some random destruction, but he did seem to pick a fight with this cockatrice dragon type thing. I was in no position to take advantage of it by trying to grab the loot or anything, which unfortunately would have been quite nice, or maybe not, that just looks like prismarine crystals. But uh, thankfully all the dragons started despawning, and uh, before too much longer I was able to leave my uh, little house prison. Look at me, scared as can be. After several minutes of hiding in my house, I finally ran home and made it back so I could sleep the night away and start day 40. Day 40 started with repairing the pin in the hopes of getting more cows and picking up a bronze javelin, an enchanted bronze javelin, I totally forgot about that. But yes, repairing the cow pins in the hopes of getting a new herd and replenishing my villager population. After feeding my trapped villagers, I went out to explore the rest of the town and then a Banshee started floating around my capital and I quickly noped out of that situation, just in time too. But once I noped out, I realized I was near cockatrices, so I decided the Banshee was the lesser of two evils, and the Aegises thankfully dealt with that. However, those two cockatrices were just waiting on the other side of my teleport to peck my eyes out. It was not my day, folks. I spent the rest of day 40 and the rest of night 40 in the mines, trying to replenish my dwindling iron supply. Although while I was in the mines, I did discover that ooze tends to move as quickly as water. I took a pretty serious hit there, but luckily was fast enough with that block to stop from dying. I was also lucky that I was carrying some healing salve, so I could heal up right away. It's the morning of day 41 and I'm still in the mines. In case you forgot everything in RL craft is trying to kill you, that's what happens when you go into the caverns. Look, he's even trying to break through the walls to come eat me. Isn't it swell? It's still day 41 and I decide to leave the mines. Then I realize it's nighttime. I risk a quick peek and I decide not to leave the mines. It's worth mentioning that at this point there is a health bar indicating a boss, a phosphorescent chubacarba. Yeah, I don't see him but he causes me no end of paranoia. Day 42 and I'm back to chores. However, my repopulation plan is working pretty well and there's a whole bunch of Aegises to show for it. Day 43 is more chores. I get attacked by a Jingu, which is nothing exciting. This happens all the time, I just don't show y'all every Jingu fight. But I also made the realization that it's getting onto the cold season again, which is going to be a problem because I've switched over to all iron armor and I don't want to switch back to wool. So I have to start making preparations to find some kind of heating element, whether it's a thermal liner or heating goo. And at this point, I didn't realize you could substitute substitute a uh, heating goo with wool. Uh, that's something I don't find out for a little while later. On day 44, I start something I really should have started quite a bit sooner. A panic shelter, made entirely of cobblestone. It's day 45 and I'm still building the panic bunker. Every area is at least two blocks thick of cobblestone, and it has a bed and a water source inside. I know there's some stuff that can destroy blocks in RL craft, so I don't know if it'll punch through two layers. I also created little slots so I could shoot arrows out if I wanted to kill any of the things causing me problems, but we'll see how that goes. On day 46, I finished my panic bunker. It's complete with arrow slits that I can fire through and a nice double layer cobblestone wall so nothing except for banshees and uh, reapers and a number of other dark monsters can attack me. After finishing my bunker, I realized I needed something to keep me warm during the winter. That creeper that's following me, I did not see him at all. He follows me for a while, and he also has super speed, so that's nice. Luckily, I'm wearing full iron, and he caught me at the edge of the blast. Otherwise, that could have been a bad day. I decided to go check out the nearby battle tower in the hopes that maybe I could find a chest in there with some thermal liners or something along those lines, because as is, Winter is going to be a difficult prospect with only iron armor and uh, no sheeps with which to make uh, wool armor. I carefully checked the entrance of the battle tower and immediately had a cave spider jump on top of me. Um, he got me a couple times and luckily I had some bandages on me so I could heal up all the damage he did. After healing up, I decided to see if I could get a bit further and see if there were any chests and I was again immediately attacked by a cave spider. It uh, also did not go fantastic for me. It's at this point I decide to run away and never look at this battle tower again. On day 47, still in need of a uh, wool armor or thermal liner or something to get me through the winter, I decide to check out this pirate ship that's right next to the battle tower. It doesn't really have any spawns and I get a bunch of free stuff including a potion of recall. And that potion of recall is very valuable. It will take me back to my bed um, whenever I drink it. 
So that gives me the opportunity to actually go out and do some riskier exploration missions. And that is invaluable in a run like this. I explore a bit further, more confident now that I have my recall potion, and I did briefly consider going to that uh, stronghold over there, but that is a lot of open water between me and the stronghold. The ocean is not your friends, kids. Returning from my exploration, I noticed I hadn't been getting as many nymphs around as I used to, um, so I <laughs> decided to try- ooh. I actually forgot that happened. Um, I ran into my first Triffid, and these guys are actually one of the most dangerous things I run into because when you uh, harvest uh, plants, they appear immediately in front of you. So from that point on, I actually started um, collecting crops and sugarcane and stuff like that at the maximum distance possible because Triffids only hit you if you're right next to them, but they hit hard. Back to what I was saying about the nymphs. I hadn't seen any nymphs for a long time, and I started to think that was because there weren't any flowers around my base. I had destroyed mostly all of them, or they had been destroyed by the dragons, one way or another. But once I planted a bunch of flowers, they started coming, so I think that's the thing. On day 48, I trapped a nymph so he could be a permanent heal, heal bot for me. Unfortunately, I forgot to name tag them, so um, they don't stick around long. The rest of day 48 consisted of doing a lot of chores, including a uh, collecting our crops, and um, fixing potholes in the villager farms over there. Also planting more grass so we could get more nymphs to float around from time to time. And I run into another Triffid. I hadn't quite learned my lesson about, uh, you know, keeping my distance yet. These things take a beating, by the way. I spent day 49 fishing. I got a few enchant books, but nothing too exciting. By day 50, I realized I was only halfway done, so I decided to take out my frustrations on these poor innocent wisps that were doing nothing but just playing catch. The shields do block their attacks, but unfortunately what I did not think about was I am wearing pants that are actually weak to magic attacks. It's not iron pants in general, it's just a quality that my iron pants have. So I did take a hit, and they almost one-shot me because of that. Right here, are you, I start safe spotting them using the door. But in the end, I got that sweet glowstone dust. I also got a gamma sphere, which I don't know if that'll be useful at any point, but you know. I spent the rest of day 50 doing chores and fixing up the luxurious apartments. My uh, peasants need better places to live than these tiny hovels. I won't give it to them, but they deserve it. On day 51, I went out and searched for sheep, and I didn't find anything. Uh, so I ran back, did some chores, and called it a day. Day 52 was more chores, and I set about deforesting some of this landscape around here to provide less spawnable spots around my area just to keep things kind of safe-ish. Also worth noting, I abandoned the vanilla shield in favor of the RL craft shield. Um, I find the RL craft shield just works a lot better overall. On day 53, the cold is really starting to set in, and I even abandoned my ar iron plate armor in exchange for a wool jacket to keep some of the cold off. Um, I set out once more in search of sheep in hopes of finding something that can help me survive the winter. While searching for sheep, I find this massive tower, which normally I would stay far away from, but at this point, I'm quite desperate for anything to keep me warm. While searching, I do find these suits of armor, and I do uh, stop to pick up the iron armor, which is a colossal waste because I already have a full set of iron. And yeah, I never end up using any of that. What I do find is some lava and a lurker. Lurkers aren't that dangerous if you see them coming. It's when you don't see them coming, they're terrifying. That thing, however, that thing I run very quickly away from. After searching most of the day, I finally found them. Sheep. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? Realizing I have almost no chance of getting them home safely, I just decide to kill them and take what wool I can. I, I've come a long way at this point, and there's no way I'm going to be able to lead sheep all the way back. I made it most of the way home, but it was nighttime, and I wasn't going to risk trying to make it the last hundred or so blocks home. So I decided to camp out in this abandoned shed I found. What I end up doing is I end up making just a little cubby right here, and I stay in my cubby the entire night through. I take no chances. But I do survive. The morning of the 54th day, I break out of my little prison home and I run like the devil himself is chasing me. Even though nothing is actually really chasing me and I'm just being paranoid. But that is how you survive in RL craft. On day 55, 56, and 57, I fished. That was my entire day. On day 58, I went into the mines getting iron for an anvil. 
I quickly realized the wool jacket I made and the wool boots were not going to be enough for the winter, so I hoped I could make an anvil and use enchantments to help me fight off the cold. My second reason for going into the mines was to find ifrits. Ifrits are pretty easy to kill, and I had hoped one of them would drop heating goo. The morning of the 59th day, I ran into one of the many reasons playing peekaboo with the caverns is a bad idea. I managed to kill him, but just barely, and after that I was done messing with those caverns. I spent the rest of day 59 doing chores and pretending the winter was not coming. From day 60 to 68, everything went perfectly to plan. Aegis's killed banshees, I grinded for experience, I gained levels in defense, I gained levels in iron skin, and I slowly worked my way up with the traders to get diamond stuff. So. Pictured now, and pictured 8 days later. I've gained a whole bunch of levels from farming, and I've gotten a whole bunch of neat stuff from trading from the villagers. I've also started getting yuletide gifts. On the 69th day, this happened. Oh salty tree, oh salty tree, how lovely is your- Wrecked! I am cowering inside the main building there, and trees are everywhere. Um, my villagers are slaughtered. I try shooting out the door in order to slow down some of the mayhem. I have a couple of villagers in there with me. Um, I'm stupid and I let them escape. Uh, but yeah, there are just, look at how massive these guys are. There is just no killing them. And they tear through and they kill all my villagers and the occasional little penguin monster appears. All of my Aegises don't do much to stop them at all. I hack away at this giant one for a while in the hopes that he'll give me like a ton of experience. He gives a decent amount, it wasn't worth it. But yeah, I just hide there, being unable to do anything as all of my hard work, all of the trades that I've been doing for the last 10 days are just wiped away in an instant. Sad panda, but I'm alive. With the salty trees vanquished, I run around searching frantically for still living villagers so I can hopefully bring back my trade industry. Eventually, I do find a couple still living, but man, my progress was just crippled drastically. There wasn't much time for me to dwell on my loss of villagers, it was getting cold and I needed a solution and I needed it now, so I went out once more in the search of something to help me survive the winter. Oh, and apparently a Lux who got stuck in a tree. Yeah, I, ooh. Yeah, I murdered him pretty easy. Desperate and out of options, I returned to the wizard tower and I grabbed three buckets of lava and ran away. It was actually really just that easy. I, I don't know why I was making it so difficult. And with that complete, I created a little hot spot in my, um, in my panic bunker and I no longer had to worry about the cold as much. I basically had to live beside these lava pools for the rest of my time here. Um, but I did keep a low ceiling, so it was, uh, it was unlikely that something would spawn and come out of it. On day 71, I began the arduous process of rebuilding my village while having to hopscotch from lava pit to lava pit. If I stayed away from the lava for too long, even with my wool armor, I would freeze to death pretty quickly. On day 72, I created a little safe spot in my panic bunker in order to viciously abuse the Yuletide gifts. The Yuletide gifts spawn monsters like uh, the Wraith. The Wraith is one of uh, two that can actually reach me, but the Wraith gets pushed out very quickly. Most of them get stuck in the ceiling and they choke to death. The only other one that's a real threat is the small salty tree, but he's pretty easy to kill one on one. So with this, I can get free diamonds, free iron, free emeralds, free gold, and free bla blaze rods. So yeah, I abuse the Yuletide gifts maliciously. I spent the rest of the day doing chores, but it's kind of hard to do chores when you're leashed to these lava pools. I did what little I could and I tried to take advantage of these crops, but again, I have very little time away from those lava pools before I start freezing. And there I go, back to the lava pool. Day 73 encompasses probably the most annoying thing about my time in winter, banshees. They pop up out of nowhere and they seem to be around much more frequently during winter. Um, the Aegises usually clean them up pretty quickly though. Uh, I also get my first head item, the Banshee Eye, so that's neat. So it's still day 73, and this is the fourth Banshee to attack me today. Wait for it. There they are. Luckily I do have the Aegises around so that it's not that big of a deal, but still. 
This is my entire winter. On day 74, I finally get my first piece of diamond armor. I got it through trades, which is the same way I got enough experience to wear the diamond armor. I spend the rest of day 74 doing chores, but it's really lucky I started wearing my diamond armor because that happened. It's hard to tell, but that thing picked me up with its mouth and started chewing me up. He did spit me out, thankfully, and I ran away as fast as I could. On day 75, I realized that my apartments were very flammable, and I also decided I might care about that. Mostly because I can't get those sweet, sweet trades if all my villagers die again. While going to bed, my demons decided to haunt me, but I decided to deal with that in the morning. The morning of the 76, my demons were fighting someone else, so I decided to ignore it like I usually do. I decided to hide from my demons by opening some of my Christmas presents. Um, I set up this little uh, kill box, and there's only one little opening right there, so basically nothing from the Yuletide gifts can hurt me. So that makes it free iron, free diamonds, free emeralds, free blaze rods. It's pretty great, actually. Day 77 was all banshees, carrots, and emeralds, but mostly banshees. And that's what we have the ages for. I spent the next few days either huddled by lava for warmth or gathering carrots to trade with villagers. I was determined to get my level up as quickly as possible. On day 80, I was finally emotionally ready to recover from the moopocalypse. On day 81, I went out and found my cow with some Kentucky Fried Friends. On day 82, I went out in search of sheep, but I couldn't find mutton. On day 83, I remembered how I lost all my livestock in the first place and decided to create an innovative way to protect them, a roof. Day 84 was dedicated to breeding livestock, all of the livestock. Day 85 was a busy one. I killed a salty treant, two cracks, and two jingu. I'm doing my part. On day 86, the ice is gone and sugarcane spam is alive and well. Later that day, all my hard work from opening my presents came to fruition. Shiny pants. Seriously, my armorer died like three times and I was tired of training up new ones. On the 87th, it was back to opening more presents. Gary needs a new pair of shoes. So somehow, even though I could hear him, I managed to forget that Satan Claus was still chasing me and he actually smacked me on the top of my head. It's a good thing they're not particularly difficult to kill, especially when you have a Russet Aegis at your back, but um, yeah, that was a bit spooky. Day 88 was all chores, but I had a bedroom buddy for me when I came home. Look at him, isn't he cute? On day 89, it's back to chores and abusing the presents, but, and this time I got two of the big treants, which I have definitive proof they do kill my villagers. It's still not a problem because I have the Aegises flying around and I still get that sweet, sweet loot. On day 90, I changed my name to Gary because I got a new pair of shoes and they are fabulous. Despite all the time I spent harvesting emeralds and carrots and abusing the trade system, it was actually abusing presents that finally got me my beautiful new shoes. Hmm, there's a lesson in there somewhere, but I'm not gonna figure it out. So I've spent entirely too much time on non-fire spreading servers because I totally forgot that lava catches things on fire. Like my wooden village huts. Uh, the wooden village huts with my survival villagers inside of it. Luckily, I did notice and I came running to put it out, but uh, <laughs> that would have been very embarrassing. Yeah, can you, can you do something about that, please? Thank you. And I took the lazy solution and I literally just knocked the wood out of this building to uh, keep it from catching again. So also on day 90, I decided to extend my sugarcane farms. I feel like this was a very poor use of my time. Um, and also it's very dangerous because there's a lot of gaps where either a Jingu or one of those big things that grab me can come up and just like snatch me out of here. And I'm pretty sure, oh, speaking of which, hi Spriggan, how about you shoot me in the face? Uh, so yeah, that's a thing that happens. On day 91, I was remembered nature is my worst enemy. Seriously, Spriggans have nearly killed me more than anything else in this game. By sheer number, Spriggans have almost murdered me more than anything else, but that's not the closest I've been to death. Moopocalypse is probably the, um, worst day I've had. But, uh, this guy is pretty simple. I just kite him inside the building and I shoot him to death. And he's not even paying attention, so I stopped for a snack. Yummy. Heh. <laughs> Got him. I'm a terrible shot. Now I got him. On day 92, I finally captured my own personal heal bot. However, I forgot to name tag them, so uh, they disappear pretty much immediately. <laughs> Isn't that great? Day 93 is all about carrots and money. 
because there's still one more thing I really need levels for. On day 94, I decided to chop down some trees with my diamond axe. Yeah, that was what I was grinding for. It's melted into the stone right there, but I know uh, defense is more important, but it's still really satisfying to have a diamond axe because did you see how quickly that tree and died? The, the axe is very useful in RL craft. On day 95, I did the no pants dance and I started enchanting all my rune gear so I could have shinier pants. You know, my doctor said it's refractive surgery why I don't need to wear glasses anymore. I'm pretty sure it's all these fat carrots. I'm sorry for that. On day 96, I decided to count my animals, which the only accurate way I could do was by going underneath and counting hoofs. Um, there's about 75 cows there, which isn't that many. But considering the amount of mods our craft has, it's still enough that in this tiny pin, uh, they lag my single player server. Animal breeding, pros and cons, but the experience is still very much worth it. I also have like, you know, 50 chickens, but they're really small, so it's not a big deal. But they're so cute. On day 96, I rush to bed, flailing my arms wildly as everyone does as they go to bed. And I perk up, ready for a bright, new, beautiful adventure on day 97. It's a beautiful winter day, crisp, wintry, cold air. Better not cry. If you make a sound, he'll skin you alive. Satan Claus is coming to kill. <laughs> and then I have a mysterious visitor come into my house, leaving presents in the form of fear, death, and uh, candy cane scythe arms. Yes, there are dozens and dozens of Satan claws attacking, phasing through my house. But luckily I have my panic bunker. Unluckily, they are slaughtering my citizens. But yeah, I would just like to point out that I am juggling about, I don't know, 15 of these guys? And I'm holding my own. Like, I'm getting shots in, I'm killing them, I am knocking them into my conveniently placed lava that I have for banshees and reapers, which granted that was specifically designed to kill these kinds of guys, but you know, can't be picky. But look at me. I'm also jumping repeatedly because um, at the same time, I am freezing to death. You can see the, uh, the air coming out of my breath. Yeah, that's me freezing. But I get lots of obsidian, which is not super useful. There's no going to the nether in our craft. Just don't, don't do it. Ah, uh, but the daylight comes and there's still Satan claws everywhere. I lost a lot of villagers. This was actually very disheartening for uh, this late in the run. There's no way to protect my villagers from this either. I don't know. I'm just lucky that this little group over here stayed huddled where they were. And yeah, no, this was, this was very unfortunate. I start shooting them and actually uh, aggroing them as well in the hopes of saving some of my villagers because from here, they can't really hit me effectively. So I uh, aggro as many as I can and bring them back into my kill box to um, try and save some of my villagers. And then I get real freaking crazy and I wander outside, but then I realize that's a stupid idea. Actually, no, I didn't do that on purpose. I got feared. One of them got a shot in on me. And when a, when a Satan Claus hits you, hits you it uh causes fear and it forces you to run in a direction you have no say in the matter that was a painful painful christmas surprise but i still have villagers left and i have made it through the event on day 98 i'm back to abusing christmas presents and at this point i i know that krampus is four blocks tall what i didn't realize is he can split the difference he can take a half slab from the bottom and a half slab from the top and he can fit inside my panic bunker. Also, for the first time after opening hundreds of these freaking presents, I found this little nightmare. It's a geist. It's not dangerous or hard to deal with, but when it suddenly jumps at you from inside of something, that, that is terrifying. Goodness gracious, whoever came up with that, why? Later that day, thanks to the help of my neighborhood Satan Claws, I found out I can take a couple hits from a treant in full diamond armor. Although that was still absolutely terrifying. And I spent the rest of this battle um, hiding upstairs and cheap shotting uh, this treant through that little tiny half slab opening where he can't see me. <laughs> 
fair play is overrated. With that batch of presents completed and with all of my treants and Satan clauses being taken care of, I finally have enough iron. I have enough diamond. I didn't really need diamond. I needed gold, but unfortunately I didn't have redstone. But anyways, the important part is the iron. I have enough supplies set aside for what has to be done. The Satan Claus, he um he gets kind of stuck inside this tower and I just I just kind of smack him in the face with my axe. It's it's nothing too crazy. Um I even stopped to check what ingredients I have for weapons, but I don't have anything to actually make the custom weapons. Those aren't banned in this run. I just I just never found a blade. Throughout this entire 98 days, 100 days, I have not found a single blade to go on a proper custom weapon and a Paxil blade is not a good substitute. We're going in with a diamond axe. Hm. On day 99, I started making this random land bridge across the ocean for some undiscernible reason. I was keeping deathly aware for any kind of underground monstrosities, or underwater monstrosities rather. I also caved and finally made a diamond shield. Normally, I just go with a stone shield because honestly, it seems like the stone shield works better to me. It just, I don't know, it feels like the diamond shield breaks really, really fast and it doesn't offer more protection in exchange. I think that might be a bug. I used all my iron to create um, a whole bunch of iron rails, which I'm going to speed this up so you can see, uh, to create a whole bunch of iron rails and some minecart tracks, which, oh, uh, there actually was one little fishy there that I had to stab. And I went out this way for some strange, unknowable reason. Huh weird i wonder what's out there and now ladies and gents for the hundredth day we are going on a lovely nature walk to view the most exotic species in the surrounding area please join me on this tranquil and respectful uh, viewing of nature's beauty and here we are the natural ruins of a long lost civilization where some exotic creatures have made it their home let us see if any of the- Oh, it seems like the locals have come forward to give us a beautiful hello, and they have a trumpet. I did not think they were so advanced. Ah, uh, but, um, apparently they were, uh, going to bed or something, because, um, yeah, they left. Anyways, on to the main event, the wild, one-of-a-kind, the Gorgon. And there she is, ladies and gents, the last of her kind. Such an exotic, rare species. Clearly, clearly meant to be caged forever. To be viewed by us civilized folk. As the animal kingdom is wont to do. A little background note, if you look at her, she will instantly kill you and turn you to stone. So just, you know, don't, don't look at her. She seems to be not agreeing with the minecart at the moment. Hmm, most troubling. She is really trying to get me a look at her. Got her. There we have it. The exotic and rare Gorgon. Nice and safely kept in captivity for our viewing pleasure. Okay, so the transportation for her is halfway complete. She's halfway up the stairs, but it's nighttime. So it looks like I will be camping out with Miss Medusa for the night. This is... Really not splend splendiferous. I thought it was going to be much easier than this. Oh, shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Got a hit on me. That's okay. That's okay. 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 I really, really don't want to be fighting anything right now, much less things that float through walls. All right. If you could finally go up the little ramp I made for you, that would be fantabulous. Nope, 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 nope. Don't go backwards. Don't go backwards. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, still alive, still alive. If anyone knows what spawns banshees, please let me know. I don't like banshees, not one little bit. Come on, come on, just stay up there. Oh, <gasps> okay. Got her at ground level. No, no! Ah, uh, dang it. Okay, well, gotta do that again. All right, let's learn from our mistakes and place some play something to stop her from going backwards just in case and she's out she's out no 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 don't don't you dare don't you dare oh my gosh and we have done it we have done it ladies and gents Whew. 
It's still night time. It's still night time. Crap, 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 crap. Okay. I know it's still coming. Where's it coming from? Actually, Banshees don't care if it's nighttime or daytime. They will murder you regardless. I should have brought a bed. It was really not smart of me to not come without a bed. Oh my gosh. Okay. There. Okay. Two. Two. Oof. Okay. Just one, just one. Woo. Okay. Okay. Not so bad. Not so bad. Oh, I really wish I knew how much time was left in the day. I should have made a clock. I, I hope my Gorgon is okay. It's daytime. All right. I'm going to need to grab water. And then I'm going to sprint because there can absolutely still be things alive. Okay. Don't look at her. Don't look at her. Look everywhere else. Um, she has been cleaning up the creepers, which is phenomenal. There's a few creeper statues over there in case you didn't see it. Okay, okay. We are in the clear. Why are you going? Oh my gosh. Why are you going the wrong way? What what sent you the wrong way? How do you have mo enough momentum to go up? Please continue going, going the way that I would like. Oh, there's a hill. There is a hill. Okay, no, don't. Don't go underwater. Do not go underwater. Okay, keep it. Oh my gosh. This is so stressful. One mistake and it's all over. Why does the other hill give you enough momentum to go up this hill, but not vice versa? That's so annoying. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. Climb the hill. Climb the freaking hill. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh, okay. Make sure there's no sea serpents. There's nothing nothing that's gonna grab me and drag me under. Not seeing anything, not seeing anything. Okay, we're good, we're good. No cracks that are gonna freaking appear out of nowhere and just take a chomp out of me. No water, Jingu. Why are you moving so slow? Okay, that's a squid, fine. Okay, good, good. All right, turn in the rails and Okay, we, we're home, lads. We are home. All right, get up. Oh, and we did it. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, and there we have it, ladies and gents. We have our very own pet, Gorgon. It took a little longer than 100 days, but we have done it, ladies and gents. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining me in my nice, tranquil, beautiful nature walk. And I hope you all join me next time. Thank you so much. Deuces.